Hi, my name is Lisa Royal Holt. I'm here today with my husband Ronald Holt and uh, I'm going to introduce to you some of the work that he's doing because quite honestly he's very shy about introducing it himself. <laughs> he's that kind of person. Okay, so uh, Ron has actually for about 30 years been doing a lot of personal work with people, different types of private sessions that are tailored to what their needs are and how uh, he can assist them on their spiritual path. So today we're going to talk a little bit about some of these modalities that he uses and see if any of them feel right for you. And so one of the first things he's been doing, well I've known him 20 years so he's been doing it for a lot longer than that, is a form of uh, remote or distant healing work. Now before I ask him to talk about that I just want to explain that when we're talking about healing work we're not talking about someone fixing someone else. That's not what healing is about because the, the only true healing is the kind that you do for yourself. But sometimes you need a facilitator to help you. So that is the kind of work that Ron does in his remote work. So I'll let you talk about your remote healing then, remote healing work. Okay, well um, in the remote healing work, um, what I like to do is take about two times during the period of the day, so like morning and evening. And as I go into deep meditation for about 45 minutes to an hour, um, I'll do a selective uh, regimen in order to connect with that individual and from the connections of source I uh, uh, am given a view on what most appropriately to work on. So from there I do energetic work, I write down what I see and then um, I'll uh, give that over to the individual. Now it's important to hold this energy uh, for a few days. So I like to do this for three days, five days, or seven days. And I usually get uh, really good feedback from the person during the course of that uh, pe time period. Oh, okay, that sounds interesting. I I've heard you work with a lot of other people and I've, I've seen them give you their feedback and it's always really, really good and very uh, powerful. So. Mm -hmm. You guys are lucky that, <laughs> that he's offering this. She's biased. <laughs> he's been a little bit too shy to offer it to the public. So, And uh, one of the other <laughs> skills that Ron has had for a very long time that he's kept in the closet is channeling. Now, you guys know that I've been a channel now for almost 30 years. And uh, when I met him 20 years ago, he, what, he had done channeling and he actually did a few for me but was always, again, too shy to offer it to other people. So, my dear, what's happening now? You're coming out of the channeling closet, finally, yes? Yes, well, they've been kind of kicking my butt and telling me to get out there and to uh, open myself out as a channel, and they will do the work. And so, surprisingly, over the last uh, few years, uh, I've been having more and more clients and uh, they've been coming through and uh, these beings um, predominantly like Archangel Michael, Mother Mary, but it, it ranges. Uh, there's been gods and goddesses that have come through from selective lands like in Japan, um, the goddess of Mount Fuji, Konohana Sakuya. She's come through and she's a very, very deeply um, and hard oriented, hard yeah. oriented uh, healer, mm -hmm. as well as Mother Earth, um, and there's been many, many others. So the beings that come through really depend on the client? Yes, they depend on the client and they depend on the needs of that client. So um, in a session like that, uh, whether it's on Skype or in person, um, what generally happens is like, let's say on Skype, um, the being may come through uh, and promote an air of energetic healing even in the location that that person is in, and that may be all the way across the world. Mm -hmm. But because, like, in, uh, as an example, like Mother Earth, because it's Mother Earth, she's 
always under our foot, well, she'll send up her energy and the individual will feel, have a very palpable experience with Mother Earth moving into deep sense of surrender, peace, love, and healing can then begin to take place when you feel that safe sense of security around you. And so dialogue may take place, and if it's in person, uh, oftentimes uh, the being that comes through may dialogue at the same time as use energetic healing uh, for that person. So they're getting kind of a double whammy in that case. I know you mostly though as a conscious channel because that's how you've let that energy out through, um, through all the years that I've known you. And that brings us to another modality that you do which is the uh, basically spiritual consultation, um, but without the woo-woo-ness of uh, actual trans-channeling, yes? <laughs> so, what's the spiritual consultation like? Well, um, let's just say uh, an individual comes in uh, for a private session, uh, and that could be on Skype or in person, and uh, they may have an idea of some issues that they would like to be like to work on, and then there may be some issues that they're unclear of. So as we chat a little bit in a very open manner, I start to tune in to what's uh, problematic in their world. And so as I start to get information, because I'm tuning in to source, um, the information that starts to come through opens the channel and all of a sudden I'm consciously channeling right in that moment and it may be any host of, of those beings and a dialogue can persist or it just may be um, as some information is expounded upon on uh, pertinent to their issue. I know you've helped me quite a lot personally because we all need help no matter even if we're teachers. And you me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so, um, but also you do regression work, right? What, can you describe that? Um, yes. Um, now this is, this is a beautiful uh, experience because oftentimes the individual that comes to me again, either in person or through Skype, um, we get a sense of uh, a trauma, a challenge, an impediment that is circumstantially very difficult for that individual to overcome. So in that case, it becomes quite evident through a little bit of the dialogue that an, a, a regression, a, sh a shamanic-like journey ah. is necessary. So it takes for the, the form the, like a shamanic journey. Yes, and we can regress back to the point of the trauma or the issue to see the um, unresolved issue or the issue that hasn't been processed enough that keeps having you tripping over it uh, in current or... So uh, it's a process of integration, inner integration. Right, right, okay. right, okay. right, right, right. And yeah. also you do shamanic healing work, which I know you did more when I first met you, but you haven't done in a long time because it's very powerful. Can you describe yes. that? Well, sometimes uh, well, there's a wide variety of shamanic work that can take place. But let's just say, in one instance, um, uh, you can utilize a lot of um, tools uh, to aid and assist the individual uh, going on an internal journey. So, as an example, uh, I used to uh, put individuals inside of a grid of very powerful uh, crystals in order to help their energy field come up to a certain level. Or um, you can use a breathing technique in order to bring enough prana into their body to kind of balance out the charge that's there that's come from the unresolved issue. Once you can get some parity in energy, then it seems like we um, have something equal uh, to the grip that you have on your pain or challenge or suffering. And so when you feel parity in the energetic, then you start to let go and you start to release. And so 
part of the shamanic journey is helping an individual um, uh, find the area that they're uh, gripping, move to a point in energy where they can begin to feel of uh, um, release, surrender, fullness. And from that point, then we can start to look and see the issue with a more clear eye instead of a polarized And there's some viewpoint. energy work done too, Yes, right? a lot of energetic yes. work is, is brought into helping the person release, move into a greater sense of empowerment, and from there, clarity on the issue. And Ron's a long-time meditator. Um, so <laughs> people are really lucky if they can learn meditation from you. So can, I guess you do uh, private meditation training sometimes. Um, yes, uh, I can assist with uh, individuals wanting to learn meditation um, and that can take a whole variety of different forms. Um, since we've both been trained in uh, quite a number of different meditation modalities, um, we can aid and assist the individual with what works best for them and their needs. But one of the things that I really love about the work you do is that, because I've seen very few people do this and it's very much shamanic, I think, is that you have an ability to kind of be a, a meditation guide in a sense where you can follow the person through their meditation process and pinpoint the obstacles and help them mm. move through them. Yes. I know uh, he'd not toot his own <laughs> horn about yeah. this, but he's very good well, at this. Um, in those 30 years, I went through a lot of deep, deep, deep crises and challenges and uh, deaths and, and so on. So um, there was no one there to really uh, counsel and assist me. So I learned a lot inside. Yes. And as I went through such deep uh, challenges, I learned to connect to Source. And Source helped guide me through this. And now, because of this long journey, that inner landscape is very clear. And so I see now individuals, and my compassion really arises, where they're stumbling in different areas of challenges that I've gone through a lot. And so um, it's a real big honor then to aid and assist individuals I've in this type of inner landscape yes. so that they can make it through the dark nights of the soul and into the greater I've illumination I've seen within. many people close to us be um, very positively influenced by your guidance in this way. So I, I hope that you will consider perhaps thinking about using Ron as a guide in that way because that's uh, a very powerful um, talent of yours, if I may say. <laughs> And finally, the last thing is the work you do with power spots, because really, ever since he was very young, even as a young man in the Navy, I must say, in the 70s, he was going to power spots and learning how to access the energy there for um, evolution of consciousness. Yes. Well, that's one of my favorite, is um, going around the world and finding uh, the spots where the integrated energy uh, in power spots uh, can aid and assist us in our pursuits of deeper explorations of ourselves. So I found that um, power spots are so rich in our ability, uh, rich in aiding us in discovering our inner landscape and helping us traverse um, many different uh, challenges in our life. And it helps us to open the heart, too. Immensely, yes. yes, yes. So we live in Arizona, and of course Arizona is filled with power spots, so Ron is quite versed in many of the power spots here. He also climbs Mount Fuji every year, <laughs> and usually takes people with him. And of course we have many other visits to other power spots as well, so I guess yeah. you're offering that. Uh, Southwest Tour, which is uh, through a lot of um, power spots across and sacred sites in the Navajo and many other um, indigenous uh, um, lands. So yeah, we're offering those. And if you um, are particularly interested in that, you can check out our website. Um, www.solyschool.org. <laughs> Soli the information will be at the end yeah. of this video. I hope that you will consider working with Ron. I, I know I'm biased because I'm married to him, but uh, he's one of the most open-hearted, 
authentic human beings that I know. Aww.